Welcome back to the Try Hard Workshop. This week we're hitting a scrap heap with Rust, part two of our Concrete and Rust Sci-Fi Essentials series. In part one, we give you the fundamentals to pour tons of your own concrete. This week, we're going full sci-fi embellishment and turning household junk into relay stations and tank traps. Using this knowledge, you'll be able to turn any geometric object into a hyper-realistic concrete shape. Then. Plastering it with bits from this video will make it into the power plant or bunker that you need it to be. To start the process, you're going to need a base structure. Q is going for a fortified relay station. So he's going for a medium sized building and he's going to cut the cardboard accordingly. No double layering here, so just cut it to the height that you want your building to be. The floor will be inset, so make sure you measure an inch down from the building's top. This will create a wall for cover. When designing this, Q was thinking about sci-fi war games. So he was thinking that he wants stairs and space for elite models to move around on. Maybe somewhere for a sniper to perch. These are the sort of things that you need to be considering when you're designing your game board. Once Q has the geometric shapes that he's happy with, it's time to give the entire thing a concrete finish. Just to quickly recap last week's video, First you'll want to give the cardboard surface a good coat of PVA glue. This glue has been mixed with a little bit of dirty paint water, which gives it that distinctive concrete colour. There's no actual paint needed yet. Paper mache the card, and whilst it's drying, apply some tiling grout. Now we've got our base structure, and it's time for the really fun part of the video, rusty sci-fi bits, otherwise known as greebling. But that's not all we have in store. You're going to need to strap in tight because next week we're using our sci-fi essentials knowledge to blast into the far future where we'll be building a whole game board. So give us a sub and hit that notification bell to get it as soon as it's out. Okay, let's kick into gear. The first thing you'll want to look for is an interesting piece of vacuum form plastic. These are the funny shaped plastic packaging that you get with most electronics. You've probably thrown away some amazing base structures already. Now Q has a box of bits he's been collecting for months in preparation for this project. Bits of straw, wiring, some fiddly metal shapes, whatever. You've got your vacuum form plastic. Take a look at it a while. Let the opportunities and possibilities fill your head. What does it look like to you? What does it scream to be on your game board? When you're ready, let's get crafting. Next up, we're going to build tank traps. These are easy to make scatter terrain and create interesting movement dynamics. It's a simple process. Get some coffee stirrers or cocktail skewers. Cut matching pairs of one or two inch strips and you'll want to connect the pairs along one side, creating a long right angled bracket.
give these brackets a point and stick three of them together along the flat back of each bracket and you've got yourself a tank trap friend. But the greebling process never ends and as you can see Q has made a long vent for his relay station. If you look on the table you'll see what else Q has in store for this station. Here's another one of Q's neat tricks. Twisting wire with a drill, which will give you loads of interesting looking material to use later, whether as barbed wire or as just general embellishment. And just look at that, simple items being turned into high quality greebling. A wet wipe lid has become a door. Vacuum formed plastic is a relay station. There's even a few bases from some other cavalry war game pieces in there as windows. The only thing we didn't show is the corrugated sheet at the bottom. Now it's literally just some cardboard with one layer peeled off the outside. Paint it all black. We're going back to a simple paint scheme with this build, an orangey brown acrylic dabbed roughly over the whole thing. To save time, just get stuck in, leaving sections black as well. This gives you a lot of extra free depth to your build. Now for the magic part, bringing it all together. Begin carefully applying all the bits. You'll want to create the build here. Think about where a door would be, what elements will look good together, and what's going to have an effect on the game that you're playing. We discussed Greebling at length in our Mega Dungeon video, but it's incredibly important for today's build, perhaps more so in sci-fi generally. The idea is, greebling is all that stuff that's stuck to geometric objects that make them look futuristic. If you think about the Death Star with all its little satellites, or the skyline of LA in Blade Runner's opening sequence, the writers don't sit down and think about every single detail of their construction, what every vent or tar means, those smokestacks don't actually have any physics that underpin them. All of that spontaneous creative madness is called greebling, and understanding it helps take your build to the next level. Let's look at the transformation this one piece of vacuum formed plastic has gone through. It was just a generally interesting geometric shape. But now, it's a relay station. All with just scrap or kipple that's been accumulated around the house. Go search the back of all your old kitchen drawers. Dig out that Tupperware that you filled with charging cables. Get your old phone and go at it with a screwdriver. Harvest their obsolete corpses in the name of Greebling. Let's talk about the differences between sci-fi and fantasy terrain because we've discovered some real fundamental truths about the two mediums. We've come to appreciate the broad differences. Fantasy wargaming is still very much underpinned by huge armies clashing on broad vistas. So beyond creating an epic atmosphere, creating fantasy scenery is much more about creating interesting terrain features that would affect the broad movement of troop formations, creating kill corridors or defensive objects to hold. Turning to sci-fi and it gets a little more complex. Not only do the shapes and the connections need to be more defined, but the nature of sci-fi wargaming is different. Line of sight is a much bigger issue when everybody has a gun. It's the same with cover, so first you need to create dynamic levels. As you can see in this build, the relay station gives a great vantage point and there's enough mid-sized walls to be able to hide behind.
Finally, Q is going to add that twisted wire and all of a sudden, you've got yourself a nice piece of sci-fi terrain. Well, that's everything from us this week. If you enjoyed the video, give us a sub. We're a growing channel and every single one means a lot to us. Tune in next week when we're going to have a truly titanic build to show off to you. Until then, try hard. Yeah, you're just starting to off.